So tell like how did you, how did you get involved with the opera line? I went. <laughs> had your I mother went. taken you to the oh, opera? Oh, the that opera. Yes, 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 yes. And I used to see the the opera line. My mother said, "Well, um, well, yeah, the, you know, they, they, that's the opera. That's they, that's the standing opera, you know." Mm -hmm. So when I was about fourteen, fifteen, I made a few the passionados, mm -hmm. but I went in and saw a couple of matinee things, you know, and then my career mm -hmm. began on the, the I was, uh, let's see, what was I, 15? Uh, the Night of Maria Collins' debut as Norm mm -hmm. in 56, mm -hmm. the night before Halloween, I think. And, uh, you know, I had heard her on records, Chetra records, which were on sale down in the river. Four, uh, four pieces of us. And I just said, in the meantime, I had fallen in love with Victoria de Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, but being taken, you know, I hadn't joined the line yet. And once I joined the line, you talk about the Everon. Mm -hmm. Much cleverer, and, well, much more clever around general knowledge and around, of course, the opera. And being, so, you know, like, what, 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 I was just at the opera last night for the first time. You know, very long time. What, what, what kind of men? What, the line was mostly men, or was it mixed? No, it was mixed. What, what kind of people were on the line? Working people, people who had left their jobs, and were opera files, and, you know, opera mania. You know. Yeah, see, but there were an enormous number of very important singers in those days, big stars, and they all sang with the men. That is no longer true. Like who was Victoria sang Well, with? there was uh, Kalas, Victoria. Renata Tabaldi, Zinka Milanov, Lita Albanese, who was still alive at 103, you know, like, you know. Yossi Bjorling, Lennon Warren, Richard Tucker. Um, I'm leaving out all kinds of people, but uh, the top of the top. I mean, you were just, you had to sing the Metropolitan, very few exceptions. You know, um, Nielsen, of course, Leontine Price, mm -hmm. our debut, 17 minutes of ovation as she stood there. 17. What year was? Uh, 61. 61. And how old was, roughly, how old is she? She's in her 80s now. So, so she was... Mm -hmm. um, what, how much did tickets cost on the standing standing room line? Dollar and a half. Maybe. Dollar and a half. Yeah. And it was... Um, and you could make money by joining a clerk. And they gave you two dollars. So if you bought a ticket for a dollar and a half, mm -hmm. you made fifty cents on the deal. Mm -hmm. But it was up for coffee and stuff. And what was how many times a week did you go? I went about forty times in a season. Generally. Well, yeah. I went, fortunately, the uh, probably the call of the the brother in charge of the dormitory right, right was a drunk. Uh -huh. He was well passed out by the time I came off the opera. This is Manhattan College? Yeah, yeah. So you were, when you were living in, uh, you were, is it up in the Bronx? I was living, yes, it's in Riverdale. I was Riverdale. Living, by that time I was living there. Yeah. 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 With, um, and then uh, what was the social life like with the other people on the line? Did you, did you we'd actually? We'd go to the coffee shop, we'd go across the street to the cafeteria, you know, 7th Avenue, you know. It was on Broadway, but... Um, it was, uh, in the, uh, this is when the Met was on 40th? Uh, 39th and 40th. Yeah. 49th and 40th. Um, on Broadway. And like you see, there were tons of students there mm -hmm. from all, all over the colleges, so we talked about stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, you know, there would be in the, in the, in, in the, uh, the intermission, you know, and uh, deciding that we better do some homework and stuff. Because then they're sitting there reading out of Bovary, for God's sake. You know. And did you have a wall? The standing line was on a. Did you have a standing wall or? Uh... Upstairs was a rail. A rail. I mean, yeah, I meant a rail. A rail. Uh, then I moved downstairs, where where my place was, uh, stage right, house mm -hmm. left, all the way down, so that I could see. Everything and everybody. So I was very skinny, so I could. <laughs> did you? Um, were you placed there? Did did I just by seniority sort of, or sort of claimed it? Mm -hmm. No, they let me. You know, it was, it was, yeah, I tried squeezing in. Mm -hmm. Eventually, it became. I weighed about you know like that. You know, mm -hmm. So I, 
he easily squeezed in. And uh, that was the night that I, I couldn't believe it. Leontine Price stood there for 17 minutes. It's wonderful. Holding the pole with that fabulous. She was fabulous as a diva. She's a great, great singer. But I mean, she knew how to do diva like no business. You know, she really did. She was the most. Milanov did too, of course. Milanov was a scream. She was a. She was, I mean, she was jokey, she was funny. She was going on one night in Tosca, and there was this train that did she carry on. And one of the little stagehands, one of the little people, tried to help her with the train. And she makes her entrance, Mario, Mario, like this. And he picks her up the train, and she says, oh, don't bother. Here they also pay me to sweep the fucking floors. Mario, Mario. <laughs> you know, and... Uh, Lines like that, you know. She was once caught behind the scene deck, bare-breasted, and some guy with his nose stuck between them. And she said, "So what? I love him." <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it was, it was, it was wonderful. It was just wonderful, and it was ruined by the new house because they put the standing room downstairs in the garage. So nobody who was passing up and down Broadway could see us, uh -huh. you know, and we were we were an attraction, you know, we were one of the attractions. So those that there's those mad people, you know, lining up for tonight's opera, you know, yeah, you know, and they have fights and they have fist fights. Sometimes they do. Right? Fist fights, but between opera buffs, yeah, uh, opera yeah, fans. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw what you did last week with Renata. I saw you laugh when she canceled. <laughs> 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 it was comical, yeah, but it was also very serious course, because so many great singers, the only recenter, oh my god, so many, and pick singers from, from the past that, who retired during the time that I was there, you know. Um, it, it was, it was, a, it was a real education, you know. It wasn't just a, it wasn't a, uh, and it's where I learned all about camp, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. You didn't help uh, Susan Sontag with her camp ideas, did you? And okay. notes on camp, or she already had her. No, she said the smartest thing of all about camp. It came to her. I mean, she, she obviously was writing about it because it had been around for so long, and she allied the. What I told her later, when I wrote about it, first I said, "I hope you don't mind if I, you know, adumbrate them." And she says, "No, that's what it's there for." She left out the black element. So it was Jewish homosexual, but it was really Jewish homosexual and black. And mm -hmm. a lot of, um, but uh, no, but the one thing she said that was nailed right on the head was camp is the exuberant celebration of certain failures. And that is camp in a nutshell. You know? The exuberant celebration of certain failures. What do you mean, like uh, marginalized people? Um, yeah. 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 An exaggerated presence or a larger-than-life presence. They were. It, it gave people who had who felt they were just well, nothing, just the proletariat, right? It gave them the status of a funny card and the knowledge. Oh my God knowledge of the form and the music and the stars of the past and old guys who would, you know, talk about Emmy Destin and Caruso and they had heard of. And you just listened, you know. And um, the line was great. The line was great. All seven years of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Vincent said that you only recognized one person last night. Or that one David Stein, yeah. yeah. And I didn't I didn't he was ahead of me and I didn't didn't approach him. I should have, but I was so moved. I've never seen or heard a Parsifal, and I heard Vickers and I, never like this man, Jonas Kaufman. I mean he is he was Parsifal. Mm -hmm. He was the holy fool. You know? It was just unbelievable. And the curtain calls Bigger than Nielsen ever got. Raised the roof 
you know, the Wagnerians are known to be enthusiastic, but this guy, at a couple of points, the conductor brought him halfway down stage and left him and pushed him down towards the He took solos that, you know, and the, every time he took them, it just roaring, roaring. And that's exciting about opera when that happens. When there's roaring and out of control, rock shell frenzy, mm -hmm. you know. Huh? Let's... This is...